In this video, we'll show how to seat the carbon brushes in a DC machine. If this step isn't performed correctly, the brush neutral position will gradually change as the brushes wear in. That can cause poor commutation, sparking of the brushes, rapid brush wear, and even damage the commutator. To seat the brushes on a DC motor, you'll need some tools, equipment, and supplies. A set of new carbon brushes, dry compressed air or a vacuum cleaner, a pair of scissors and or a box cutter, 120 grit garnet paper or flint sandpaper, masking tape or packing tape, a brush seating stone, and in multiple clean rags. Before installing the brushes, make sure the commutator is smooth and clean. The bottom edges of the brush boxes should be parallel with the surface of the commutator and at a uniform height of 1 8 to 3 16 of an inch. That's about three to five millimeters above the comm. We'll use a spacer here to check that and make sure everything's square. The brush boxes should also be parallel with the commutator bars. The surface of a new brush will be smooth and shiny. These brushes were recently replaced by a customer and they did not seat the brushes. You can see that these brushes are only making about 10 to 20% contact with the commutator. When seating brushes, the goal is to reshape the brush face to achieve 100% contact with the commutator at each brush face. At that point, the front and rear edges of the brush faces will be in full contact with the commutator and sanding marks should be visible across the entire face of the brush. Since the brushes conduct armature current, they must conform with the commutator to ensure the entire brush cross section carries current. If a brush is only half seated, the same current passes through a cross sectional area about half as large, which effectively doubles the current density for the working part of the brush. More importantly, if the brushes aren't fully seated, the brush contact area will gradually shift away from the neutral position as the brushes wear in, progressively causing more and more sparking. By the time the brushes wear enough to make full contact with the commutator, the sparking could be so severe that it damages the commutator. The actual process for seating brushes is pretty simple. First, we'll cut a piece of 120 grit garnet paper, the width of the commutator, and long enough to overlap the opposite end. In other words, it needs to be longer than the circumference of the commutator. Never use emery cloth because it's conductive aluminum oxide abrasive will embed in the brush surface and cause arcing when the motor is operating and it will also scratch and damage the commutator. With the brushes removed, we'll tape one end of the sandpaper to the commutator with the abrasive side facing up and then wrap the rest around the commutator so that our free end covers the taped end. Masking tape or packing tape usually works well for this step. For large machines with a lot of brushes, it helps to install a few brushes at a time. The brush box angles, even though these castings are almost identical, may vary slightly. So it's best to seat each brush in the brush box where it's going to be installed to operate. To make this easier, connect the brush shunt terminals to their respective fasteners. Before going further, remember to follow your organization's safety practices and procedures. Rotate the shaft by hand in the direction that keeps the sandpaper tight to begin shaping the brushes to conform to the commutator. For a large machine such as this one, you'll probably need a spanner wrench or a strap wrench, which we'll use here, to turn the shaft. After a few revolutions, remove the brushes and evaluate the progress. Reinstall the brushes and continue turning the shaft, gradually reshaping the brushes to conform with the contour of the commutator. In a case like this with 36 total brushes, we're probably going to put a few brushes in, seat those, lift them, and then seat another few brushes at a time. To keep carbon dust out of the winding, we're going to use a vacuum cleaner or dry compressed air to remove the carbon dust. The brushes are fully seated when the front and rear edges are in full contact with the commutator with no shiny spots. Lift each brush as it's fully seated, leave it hanging from the fastener and the shunts, and then install and seat the next group of brushes in their boxes. 
We'll continue that process until we've seeded all the brushes. As a final check, carefully inspect the face of each brush before installing it in its brush box. Each brush should be 100% seeded with no shiny spots. To complete the procedure, we now install all the brushes and the brush springs and run the motor at a reduced armature voltage while slowly passing our brush seeder stone back and forth ahead of the leading edge of the brushes in each row. Applying more pressure to the seeding stone may speed up the process, but it also creates a lot more dust. Precise adjustment of the brush neutral position is essential for efficient DC machine operation and long brush life, but that's only possible if we fully seat the brushes first. To sum up, seating DC motor brushes is a really simple process, but we have to follow the correct procedures and use the right equipment to avoid problems that may affect DC motor performance. Thanks for watching and join us for more electric motor repair tips. Thank you.